Hey guys, it's Z. Coming back at you with another 20 cards I recommend for the Commander format, all under $10. Uh, today, we're going to hit the multicolor cards. And I know what you might be thinking. Okay, so we're going to hit two of each of the two colors. No, we're not going to quite do that. Uh, basically, I just... Not every two-color scheme is built the same, unfortunately. Not all of them have cards that I would recommend at the same levels. So what I did, or what I tried to focus in on, is I just tried to pick 20 really really good cards that I would recommend having in your collection some of these will be commanders or legendary creatures oh excuse me um, some of these are just going to be other value cards so it's going to be a little bit of a mixed hodgepodge of things um, but we'll kind of just roll through it here so starting off with number one we're going to have if my list wants to load Linvala's Shield of Seagate um, so what she is, is she is a legendary creature, 3-3 three, three, human, or uh, I'm sorry, angel wizard, uh, flying at the beginning of combat in your turn. If you have a full party, choose target non-land permanent and opponent controls. Until your next turn, it can't attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated. Frankly, we don't really care about the party mechanic here on this card. It's more so here for its other ability that I'm about to mention. Um, but if you are building a party deck, that first ability can be incredibly relevant on getting rid of troublesome problems um, so the ability it's really on this list for is sacrifice Linvala choose hexproof or indestructible creatures you control gain that ability until the end of turn it's a global protection for your board state um, and so for three mana on a three three flying body that gives you all those innate protections that's just great uh, realistically being able to use it to survive a board wipe or to get around pesky threats, I'm, I'm down for that every day of the week. Uh, next one we're going to talk about here is Una, Queen of the Fae. Three, and then a hybrid blue-black, blue-black, blue-black. Um, so you can choose to pay either a blue or a black for these effects. Uh, legendary creature, fly, uh, fairy wizard. Five-five creature with flying. You can pay X in a hybrid blue or black. Choose a color. Target opponent exiles the top X cards of their library. X is that mana you spent to put into the ability. For each card of the chosen color exiled this way, create a 2-2 black and blue fairy rogue creature token with flying. So what this really means for us is, hey, I've got a bunch of mana. I'm going to dump 12 mana into it. Exile the top 12 cards of your deck. And let's say I hit, I say red on the red player. Every red card I get, I'm getting a fairy to block with or to attack with for that. So it's got a couple of different versatility uses. It could be used as a win condition to mill your opponent out. It could be just a supplemental, hey, I'm going to get myself some blockers. It could be a mana sink to just, hey, I've got extra mana at the end of my opponent's turn right before mine. I might as well pump it into it and get something out of it. So... It's just a way to get some extra value. The next one I'm going to talk about here today is going to be Tiana, Ship's Caretaker. So four, it's a 5-mana, 3-3 three, three, Angel Artificer, Flying First Strike. Whenever an aura or equipment is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may return that card to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. So in this case, this is primarily more for the Voltron decks that want to get one commander to make it super powerful and go um, but I did want to kind of showcase cards for a couple of different archetypes or a couple of different like ideas of what they do I didn't want to just focus in on one or two areas um, so I figured you know we wanted to give them a little bit of a spotlight and show the next card on my list I know I've kind of mentioned in one of the earlier videos more so as a purpose of example um, and that's going to be Mael of the Anima Three mana, a red, green, and a white, for a two-three elf shaman. You pay three, a red, a green, and a white, so six mana, and tap it. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may put a creature with power five or more from among them onto the battlefield, and the rest go in the bottom in any order. Basically, that's going to let us pay six mana, tap. What's on the top of our deck? Oh, hey, here's a big, nasty creature. Let's put it in play and keep going so you don't even have to have the card in hand you can have it on just at the top of your deck and we can go find it 
Uh, the next one we've got on the list here is just an oldie but goodie. Terminate. A red and a black. Destroy target creature. It can't be regenerated. Simple, effective kill spell. Um, honestly, I'm not ever going to complain about a kill spell. Um, they are very needed in the format. The next one we're looking at here is an enchantment called Fires of Yavimaya. One red or green enchantment. Creatures you control have haste. You can sacrifice Fires of Yavimaya for target creature to get plus two, plus two until end of turn. So if you're two points away from that kill on somebody, you can just sacrifice your fires and get it. But at the same time, it's global haste for all of your creatures. So if you need to have, if you've got 12 creatures entering play this turn, well, now they can all attack and reduce that clock for your opponent, make it a lot faster of a game. Uh, the next one I've got here, this is very much a card for like the token strategies or life gain, uh, and that's going to be Tristani, Celestia's voice. Green, green, white, white for a 2-5 Dryad. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. So it does gain you life, it does care about toughness. However, for one, a white and a green, you can tap Tristani and populate. Populate's basically just going to give you a copy of it, uh, uh, give you another token that's a copy of one you already have. So if you already got a 5 5 worm, you can make another 5 5 worm. If it's a 6 6, six, six monster, you can make a 6 6 monster, you know, for example. Um, the next one we're going to talk about is another planeswalker that's going to be Ashiok Dream Render so it's one hybrid blue black and a hybrid blue black so two hybrid blue black and a and generic uh, for a legendary planeswalker Ashiok with five loyalty spells and abilities your opponent's control can't cause their controller to search their library basically they're not going to go search their deck they're not going to tutor so those rampant growth effects that are going to go find lands from the deck, that's not happening. Uh, tutor effects, they're not happening. So ultimately, Ashiok is going to make them play a lot more fair. The other ability of Ashiok with a negative one is target player puts the top four cards of their library into the graveyard, then exile every opponent's graveyard. So basically it's going to get rid of those opponents graveyard so they can't use it as a resource much like we've already discussed in this and it's going to give you that capability to just go you know i want to keep everyone from searching because i can't really search that much with my budget or you know for example the next card we're looking at is a commander with a little bit of a, a little bit of a uh, reputation behind it so you might not look at this as a commander you might look at this as a card in the 99 um or you might look at other brews for it. But that's Joy Road, Weatherlight Captain. Two, a red and a blue. Legendary creature, human artificer, for a 3-3. Whenever you cast a historic spell, draw a card. It says cast, so it doesn't have to resolve. And what they classify as a historic spell are going to be artifacts, legendaries, and sagas. Um, so if you were looking to build a saga deck, this is a commander that can kind of help you out with that. Uh, its color scheme will limit you a little bit but it'll at least be a starting point um but notably i've seen a lot of people build this with artifacts in mind this is a card in your artifact deck will give you a lot of draw power and not quite put that reputation on your head or that target on your back so plus i do think having the ability to draw off a couple of cards here is going to be important um, the next one we have is kind of a big bomb style finisher in the form of Gerard Golgari Lich Lord. So he's black black green green for a two er, for a two two zombie elf. So he's got two relevant tribal typings as well, in case you care about that kind of thing. And Gerard gets plus one plus one for each creature card in your graveyard. And notice it's your graveyard. For one a black and a green though, you can sacrifice another creature each opponent loses life equal to the sacrifice creature's power. So I've got a five, a five power guy in the graveyard, uh, or a five power guy on the board. I can sacrifice him to the ability here. Each opponent's going to lose five, and we're going to go from there. 
other thing we've got going for us with this commander or this card, I should say, is you can sacrifice a swamp in a forest and return him from the graveyard to your hand. So even if he's in the 99, you've got a way to recur him pretty consistently. The next one we're looking at is kind of just a global board wipe style effect um, that a lot of people, a lot of people I know enjoy it, um, especially for its mode selection. So it's Merciless Eviction, four white black. Choose one as a sorcery. You can either exile all artifacts, you can exile all creatures, you can exile all enchantments, or you can exile all planeswalkers. So. It gives you just enough versatility to be able to protect your own things or to make sure you're getting the absolute most value out of the table with it. Oh, hey, the Super Friends player is about to go off. He's got six cards that are about to pop their emblems on the very next turn. Let me Merciless Eviction and get rid of them all, and I'm going to exile them. Um, obviously, these are magical Christmas land scenarios, but these are just some things you can see. Um, you can exile all the enchantments to get rid of the enchantress player and kind of keep them back in check. Slow the artifact player down. Remove all the tokens from the creature player, you know. So every one of these, it makes a good counterplay too. Um, the next one I look at, this one I kind of would be careful about playing as commander as well just because of its reputation. Um, playing it in the 99, it makes a pretty good value engine. Um, because it rewards you for doing what your deck wants to do. That's Tatiova Benth uh, Benthic Druid. Three, a, a, it's three mana, a blue, and a green. For a, Mulfer, a Merfolk Druid, three, three. Like a target helps. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain a life and you draw a card. So it's effectively a landfall trigger that's going to gain you some life. Incremental advantage, sure, we'll take it. The more important thing is it draws you a card. And you're naturally going to be wanting to play lands to progress your game state anyway, get further, play more cards. So realistically, all this is going to do is help fuel your deck into what it wants to do. That's why, as a commander, it's a pretty... It's got a little bit of a reputation for, okay, cool, I'm going to drop 12 lands, draw 12 cards, now I'm going to play control and... At least in my experience, that's what I've seen. Um, but it's a great card. I do still recommend it wholeheartedly. It's just one of those I would be careful when you run it. So the next one we're looking at is going to be Sphinx's Revelation. Uh, so this is going to be an X spell. X, white, blue, blue. For an instant, you gain X life and you draw X cards. So... At the end of somebody else's turn, let's say you kept up mana for counter spells or trying to make sure you had abilities you could use. Okay, cool. Uh, it's about to be my turn again. I'm going to just go ahead and Sphinx's Revelation for six. Draw six cards, gain six life. I've now got six fresh resources in my hand to be able to do things on my turn. Um, and so with that, it's a nice little jump start to your turn before your turn ever begins. Since it is an instant, you don't have to use it on your turn. You can just save it and wait. Um, and for these draw go type effects where they're playing those type of controllies, uh, controlling matchups, it's a pretty good thing to have. So the next one I went with, I went ahead and went with a, another new card, uh, Prismari Command. So Prismari Command is one, a red, a blue, instant, choose two. So target player draws two cards and discards two cards. Target player creates a treasure token. Prismari Command deals two damage to any target and destroy target artifact. So, at worst case, the way I view this card is it's, it's a, a worst case scenario, it's an is it charm. Best case scenario, I'm getting the upside of two is it charms, whether that's deal two damage to any target and draw two, discard two, or destroy artifact, destroy a creature because I dealt two damage to it. You know, things like that. So this card is versatile, but because it's so versatile, they did have to rein in its effects. Uh, 
that said, it is still used two of the three, and token synergies do exist, so just something to keep in mind. Our next card we're looking at is going to be called is going to be a counter spell. It's called Void Slime. A green, a blue, a blue. Instant counter target spell, activated ability or triggered ability. So much kind of like we talked about in the blue section where we talked about uh, one of the other spells, Trick Bind. Void Slime is a counter spell that does Trick Bind things, but it also counters a regular spell. The flip side is it doesn't have that split second, so it can be interacted with. But having that versatility, I do feel, is very important and honestly is a card that makes it worth considering in your collection. Even if it's just, hey, I'm looking for my eighth counter spell. Let's go ahead and put Void Slime in there. That way I can deal with an activated ability. I can deal with the triggered ability that's getting out of control. So the next one we're talking about is another commander, which I actually like as a commander, um, but I do know it's got a little bit of a reputation behind it as well. Most of these decks have shifted over to Moldrotha, and then I've seen some people come back to this. I've seen some people play hybrid where they run. Some weeks it's this, some weeks it's Moldrotha, but that's Marin of Clan Neltal. It's a four mana, three, four human shaman. Whenever another creature you control dies, you get an experience counter. Beginning of your end step, choose target creature in your graveyard. That creature's converted mana cost is less than or equal to the number of experience counters you have. Put it on the battlefield. So just straight puts it back into play. Otherwise, though, you can still put that card into your hand. So either way, you're getting a card back from the graveyard every turn. It's just, does it go to your hand or does it go to the field? And... In this kind of instance, it doesn't really matter because either way, it's a good thing. Um, the next card we're looking at is another kind of global board wipe, uh, but it does have a little bit of a selection to it. So that's going to be Pernicious Deed for what a green and a black. Pernicious Deed is an enchantment that says X and sacrifice Pernicious Deed. Destroy each artifact, creature, and enchantment with converted mana cost X or less. So, notably, it does not impact Planeswalkers because it came out before Planeswalkers were a thing. So, if you're playing, like, a Super Friends deck, Pernicious Deed is a pretty good board wipe to have. On top of that, if you're playing a deck that's focused in on big, high-powered things, you can go Pernicious Deed for 4, hit most of your lower-cost things, and clear out a bunch of the opponent's lower stuff. So, just something to keep in mind with that. Our next one we're going to be looking at here is Elidomiri's Call, um, or Elidomiri's Call, however you pronounce it. Um, it's an instant. Research your deck for a creature card, reveal it, and put it in your hand. Shuffle your library in green and white. So it's a creature tutor that puts it directly in your hand at instant speed. You can use this at the end of somebody else's turn. Get the card in your hand. You'll have it when you go on your turn, and you can just roll from there. Uh, this one is one that came out this year that I know a lot of people were excited about and it's got a lot of good gotcha potential uh, and that's going to be Ink Shield 3, a white, and a black prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to you this turn for every one point of damage prevented this way you get to create a 2-1 flying white, black, inkling creature token so if you're going to take 70 points of damage you get to create 70 little token monsters to go after people and they do fly, so it's got built-in evasion. Um, this card screams to me Arachnogenesis without screaming to me Arachnogenesis. Um, it is five mana, it is in two color, but they do have evasion, and they're on a more aggressive body. So, with that being said, it's got a little bit of built-in versatility. It gives you a way you can just turn the tides on your opponent, so to speak. If they thought they were going to get you, you cast this, go no no you didn't have me matter of fact you're tapped out now so we're going to turn the tables so um, and then the last one in this kind of category we're talking about at least for now is going to be anguish unmaking so it's a three mana cost one white black instant 
that says exile target non-land permanent, you lose three life. So first and foremost, it's a hard exile. Doesn't go to the graveyard, they don't get an opportunity to get it back from the graveyard. Other thing is, it is non-land permanent. So you can't hit a land with it, but you can hit every other permanent type. Planeswalker, creature, enchantment, so on. So, uh, it does have a lot of built-in versatility, um, but at the same time, you do have to pay three life, and you are not going to be able to hit lands with it. So you will have to have other cards in order to do that. Uh, but overall, those are 20 cards, I think, that are pretty good within these. Um, like I said, obviously I didn't hit every good two-color, multicolor card. Um, I didn't hit a lot of three-color cards, for example. So it's one of those, if we want to see more, or y'all want to have a discussion in the comments below, let us know. Tell us what you think. Hey, you missed this. Hey, can we get another round of them? Something like that. I'm sure we can come up with a bunch of them, considering we're only just picking 20 cards, and realistically, it's 20 that I kind of played around with and came up with um, while trying to figure out a few things. So these are just a couple cards that I recommend for your collection. Obviously, you're going to know what you need more than I will. Um, in the meantime, let us know in the comment section below. Thank you, for, thank you for tuning in. Take care. Have a good one. Stay safe.